Xerxes Corporation is a leading manufacturer of fiberglass storage tanks, both above ground and underground models for a range of products and applications. Together with our parent company ZCL Composites, we are North America's largest manufacturer of underground storage tanks, with six strategically located manufacturing facilities. Fiberglass tanks are the superior choice for a wide range of water and wastewater process and storage applications. Underground storage tanks used in these applications often involve very corrosive environments, both inside and outside of the tank, making fiberglass the ideal material of construction. Xerxes fiberglass underground storage tanks are built to strict manufacturing standards. Great care is taken to provide long-lasting performance and environmental safety. Quality tank fabrication must be matched by quality installation for the tank to perform as designed. Industry sources, including the American Water Works Association, NFPA, NSF, and the EPA, agree that one of the major requirements for success in underground storage systems is proper installation. This training video is designed to highlight installation steps as outlined in the various sections of the installation manual and operating guidelines, but is not intended to be a substitute for understanding the broader requirements for proper installation which are detailed in the installation manual and operating guidelines. Carefully read the entire manual, paying particular attention to the safety instructions before you begin installation. Also, you must follow all applicable codes, regulations, and standards of appropriate government agencies. You will also find the same printed installation information affixed to every Xerxes tank. We recommend that while viewing this training video, you follow along in the installation manual and operating guidelines. From now on, we will refer to this manual as the installation manual. The installation manual comes with a tank installation checklist found at the back of the manual that can serve as a step-by-step -step quality control guide. You should complete this checklist to assist you in following the correct procedures. When you have completed the installation, give the original checklist to the tank owner along with the installation manual and keep a copy for your own records. In addition to the installation manual, supplemental materials are available that may apply to specific installations and or conditions. The supplemental materials are listed in the installation manual and most supplemental materials are available on our website. This training video is divided into the following sections. 1. Planning for installation. 2. Handling tanks. 3. Pre-installation inspection. 4. Testing during installation. 5. Installing tanks. 6. Post-installation testing. 7. Piping, venting, and containment sumps. 8. Completing installation. 9. Review. You may find it useful to pause after each section and review the broader requirements as detailed in the installation manual and operating guidelines. Section 1. Planning for installation. The first portion of this video includes certain topics that should be considered before a tank is delivered. These include backfill material selection, excavation requirements, tank anchoring options, taking diameter measurements, and on-site air testing requirements. Refer to the table of contents in the installation manual for the particular section where these topics are discussed in greater detail. Backfill material. Using appropriate backfill material is essential to the successful installation and operation of underground tanks. Using materials other than those specified in the installation manual without our prior written authorization may result in tank failure. Generally, all backfill, from the 12-inch bedding to subgrade, must be either rounded stone or crushed stone that meets the printed specifications. Rounded stone and crushed stone materials are referred to as primary backfill materials in the installation manual. Rounded stone should be a mix of rounded particles from 1 8 inch to 3 quarter inch in diameter. Crushed stone should be a mix of angular particles 1 8 inch to half inch in diameter. Refer to the installation manual for precise backfill specifications, which references ASTM material standards. Excavation Requirements Excavation size is determined based on tank quantity, tank dimensions, along with other key factors explained in the installation manual. Generally speaking, all tanks require a minimum 12-inch thick bedding of approved backfill material, 
Therefore, key factors for depth of the excavation include bedding, tank diameter, and the required amount of tank cover material, including any concrete or asphalt slabs at grade. Total depth of cover requirements on our tanks range from a minimum of 12 inches to a maximum of 7 feet. Key factors include whether or not the tank will be subjected to traffic loads and whether the excavation and tank will see groundwater. Tank quantity, diameter, size, and soil conditions are key factors in determining tank spacing. In all cases, the minimum spacing distance between the tank and the sides of the excavation shall be 18 inches. In the case of more than one tank in the hole, a minimum of 18 inches between tanks is required as well. Spacing between tanks may be greater if tanks are anchored. If you use dead men for multiple tanks installed side by side, you may have to allow more space between tanks to accommodate the dead men. If the excavation is in unstable soil, for example peat, landfill, soft, or expansive clay, we recommend that the tank owner seek the advice of a local foundation professional engineer. In your plans, make sure to note that spacing between tank and the sidewalls in unstable soils shall be a minimum of one-half the tank diameter. Also, if the surrounding soil is unstable, or if there is a potential for groundwater conditions to fluctuate, geotextile or filter fabric may be required to prevent migration of the bedding material into the native soil or the soil into the bedding. Anchoring Tanks we recommend that every site be thoroughly evaluated for the potential of a rise in the local water table or of perched or water trapped in the excavation. Sufficient overburden and or an appropriate anchoring system must be present to offset potential buoyancy of the tank. If an anchoring system is to be used, note that only our anchor straps may be used when anchoring a tank. We have different types of anchor straps options, standard straps and man-out-of-hole straps. Two common types of concrete anchors used are dead men or an anchor slab. The dimensions of the dead men and the slab depend on the size of the tank and the depth of burial and are provided in detail in the installation manual. Consult the dimension tables in the installation manual before excavation so you provide sufficient space. Anchor points are required in the slab or dead men to connect them to the hold down straps that will be placed over the tank, on the ribs of the tank. Hold down strap locations are marked on certain ribs of tanks with marked arrowheads. Plan carefully when locating the anchor points in the slab or dead men so that they correspond with the tank ribs marked with arrowheads. Our prefabricated dead men are supplied with 3 quarter inch diameter, galvanized, adjustable anchor points and generally ship on the same trailer as the tank. Taking diameter measurements. At various stages of the installation process, you will be required to take tank diameter measurements. You will take a total of four diameter measurements during installation, and you will record these on the installation checklist. An initial measurement of the tank diameter will be taken before installation of the tank begins. This first measurement is used as a comparison reference for subsequent measurements in order to check proper backfill placement, and to verify that the installation process is proceeding correctly. Refer to the installation manual for more information on how to take diameter measurements and the allowable tank deflection limits. On-site air testing requirements. At various stages of the installation process, there may be on-site air testing requirements. To air test tanks, you need to construct a test manifold. The air supply gauge must have a maximum full-scale reading of 15 PSIG. The pressure relief device must be rated to a maximum of 6 PSIG, or 4 PSIG for a 12-foot diameter tank, to reduce the risk of overpressurizing the tank. Section 2. Handling Tanks Now that we have explained some general planning considerations, we will begin discussing the installation of tanks, beginning with when the tank arrives on the job site. When the tank arrives at the job site, before unloading a tank, visually inspect it for any shipping or handling damage. You will have to sign the shipping papers provided by the driver. If any damage is observed, this must be noted on the shipping papers before signing. Refer to appendices of the installation manual to determine the dimensions and weight of your tank. Based on tank size and design, some tanks are rotated on the trailer for shipping purposes, while others are not. When the tank is not rotated, that is, when the tank is upright, Use all lifting lugs to unload and install the tank. 
Rotated tanks have extra lifting lugs to aid in the loading-unloading process. Use the lifting lugs that are situated on top of the tank in its rotated position to offload the tank from the truck and place it on the ground. Do not wrap chain or cable around the tank. If necessary, use guide ropes or tag lines to guide the tank. Do not move the tank by rolling it. Select a solid, level area clear of debris where you can place the tank after lifting the tank off the trailer. When placed, chalk the tank, for example, with sandbags to stabilize it. Section 3. Pre-Installation Inspection Our tanks are tested prior to shipment, but they must be tested on-site prior to installation to make sure they were not damaged during shipment. For all tanks, the first test is a visual inspection. Thoroughly inspect the entire outside of the tank, including the bottom of the tank. Rotate the tank so that you can see the tank bottom. If any damage is detected during this initial inspection or during any part of the tank install, do not attempt repairs. Contact customer service at the manufacturing facility nearest you. Phone numbers are listed on the back cover of the installation manual. Section 4. Testing during installation. After the initial visual inspection, different types of tanks require different tests during the installation process. To help understand which test applies to your tank, we will begin by describing the types of tanks that we manufacture. Next, we will explain how to perform on-site air testing. Finally, we will conclude this section of the training by showing the specific tests that apply to each tank type. We manufacture single wall and double wall tanks. On double wall tanks, the space between the walls of the tank is called the interstitial space. Double wall tanks are typically shipped with a dry interstitial space and are commonly referred to as dry tanks. Remember that not all tanks are air testable in the field. All tanks storing potable water must be air tested at the appropriate time as described in the installation manual. If the tank you are installing is not an air testable tank, there is an optional hydrostatic test that the tank owner may request. Refer to the installation manual for specific instructions on hydrostatic testing procedures. Now it is time to learn about on-site air testing. Always remember that air testing a tank can be hazardous to people and property. Carefully read all warnings, cautions, and notices listed in the installation manual, and always notify all people on the test site when an air test is underway. Before air testing, you will remove, clean, and re-dope all factory furnished temporary plugs with appropriate thread sealant. Then install permanent plugs in all openings where piping will not be installed. Remember also that a service fitting is needed for the test manifold we described earlier. The test pressure must stabilize at 5 PSIG, or 3 PSIG, for a 12-foot diameter tank by adding or removing air as necessary. You must allow for pressure variations when tanks are subject to abrupt temperature changes. When the pressure stabilizes, you will close the valve on the test manifold and disconnect the air supply line. After the pressure stabilizes, the minimum air test duration is one hour if you are testing the primary tank or interstitial space. When air testing a dry tank, you must never apply pressure to the interstice directly. Those tanks come with a quick disconnect assembly connected to the interstitial monitor fitting. The assembly consists of a gauge, a valve, and a hose. This assembly is not connected to the primary tank until after the primary tank has been tested. Without releasing the pressure on the primary tank, after testing the primary tank, you will insert the hose into the quick disconnect fitting of the primary tank. This will allow air pressure to flow from the primary tank to the interstitial space. After pressurizing a tank, you will apply a soap solution to the tank to check for leaks. When soaping, watch for active air bubbles, which indicate a leak. On single wall tanks, you will soap the entire exterior of the tank. On double wall tanks, you will first apply air pressure to the primary tank, and at that time, soap only the fittings and manways. Then, after you have pressurized the interstice of a dry tank, you will soap the entire exterior of the tank. If soaping the entire tank, Rotate the tank to check the bottom. Rotate the tank slowly and carefully to avoid developing too much momentum. Make sure the tank's fittings and manways never touch the ground. Do not rotate the tank more than 120 degrees from the tank's upright position. If your air test is successful, you will carefully release the air pressure, remove the test manifold, and continue installing the tank. 
Now it is time to discuss the specific tests required for each tank type. Testing a single wall tank. For single wall tanks that will be air tested, you pressurize the tank, soap the entire exterior, and monitor the pressure for one hour. Remember, if the tank will be storing potable water, the pre-installation air test is required. Testing a dry tank. Dry tanks are shipped from the factory with the interstitial space under vacuum and are shipped with a gauge assembly attached to the monitor fitting. This allows for monitoring the tank during shipping and handling. The date that the vacuum was applied is on a label near the monitor fitting or on the shipping papers delivered with the tank. You must record the date and vacuum gauge reading on the tank installation checklist. For these tanks, you must meet the following interstitial vacuum requirements. 1. Tanks shipped under vacuum must be under vacuum for a minimum of 7 days, as indicated on the shipping documents and or tank labels. 2. The vacuum gauge shipped with the tank reads at least 12 inches of mercury. If the tank meets both of these requirements, you may continue with tank installation. If the tank fails to meet either of these requirements, or if the tank was not shipped with vacuum on the interstice, you must air test the tank. When air testing a dry tank, you pressurize the primary tank first, soap the fittings and manways, and monitor the pressure for one hour. Then, after the primary tank has been tested, use the quick disconnect assembly to pressurize the interstitial space and soap the entire exterior of the tank. You must also monitor the pressure on the interstice for one hour. After you have either met the interstitial vacuum requirements or passed the air test, you will conduct an air pressure test of the primary tank when backfill has been brought to the top of the tank. At that time, you pressurize the primary tank, soap the fittings and manways, and monitor the pressure for one hour. This concludes the discussion of specific test requirements for each type of tank. If the tank does not pass these tests, or if any damage is detected during any part of the tank install, do not attempt repairs. Contact customer service at the manufacturing facility nearest you. Phone numbers are listed on the back cover of the installation manual. Section 5. Installing Tanks Before beginning tank installation, take a tank diameter measurement. Record this as measurement number 1 on the tank installation checklist. You will measure the diameter again later and compare those measurements to this initial measurement. If geotextile is used, it is placed on top of a slab or under deadmen. If an anchoring system is used, it should be placed in the excavation before the tank. There needs to be 12 inches of approved backfill under the tank as bedding, including when an anchoring system is used. For certain diameter tanks, an option is for the dead men to be placed so the bottoms of the dead men are even with the bottom of the tank, that is, with the dead men placed on top of the bedding material. We are showing standard placement of dead men in this training video. If dead men are being placed on top of the 12 inches of bedding material, you may need to use different turnbuckles and or use wire rope, depending on the diameter of tank you are installing. If water is standing in the hole, pump water from the excavation hole before placing the tank and continue pumping to maintain minimum water level during tank installation. Attempt to maintain the water level below the top of the bedding materials until the tank can be fully backfilled and ballasted. If the water level in the excavation cannot be lowered, you may have to add ballast to the tank to lower it firmly on the backfill bed. Use only enough ballast to lower the tank until backfill can be added up to the top of the tank. In a dry hole, the ballast level in the tank should always be lower than the backfill level outside the tank. After smoothing and leveling the bedding material, place the tank using the lifting lugs. If dead men are in place, center the tanks between them. Once the tank is in position, place a small amount of backfill under the sides and domes of the tank to stabilize it. If hold-down straps are used, install them at the locations marked with arrowheads on the tank. Tighten all straps uniformly until they are snug, using additional anchoring hardware, such as turnbuckles and or wire rope. Hardware specifications for each size tank are in the installation manual. After the straps have been installed and tightened, take a tank diameter measurement to check tank deflection and record it as measurement number two on the tank installation checklist. On some tanks, bottom fittings and piping needs to be installed at this time. Now you are ready to begin backfilling. For a successful tank install, it is critical that the backfill supports the tank 
especially from the 5 o'clock to the 7 o'clock positions at the sides of the tank and under the dome tank ends. This will require handwork. Starting with a 12-inch lift of backfill, use probes to push the backfill completely under the sides and domes of the tank, but do not use metal bars. Take care to ensure that there are no backfill voids under the tank. Repeat the same process with another 12 inches of backfill. After two 12-inch lifts are placed against the tank, you can backfill to the top of the tank without further handwork. When you have finished backfilling to the top of the tank, take another tank diameter measurement. Record it as measurement number 3 in the tank installation checklist, and determine whether tank deflection is within the allowable limits shown in the installation manual. As a precaution, many installers choose to ballast tanks after backfill is brought up to the top of the tank. Section 6. Post-Installation Testing On some tanks, you will conduct an air pressure test of the primary tank when backfill has been brought to the top of the tank, soaping just the fittings and manways at this time. Monitor the pressure for one hour. If you are going to perform this air test on the primary tank while it is ballasted with water, the tank can be pressurized to the same test pressure that you would use on an empty tank. Some tank owners may require that you perform an optional hydrostatic test that you would perform when the backfill has been brought to the same level as the top of the tank. At this point, all that remains before you can backfill to grade is to add the tank accessories and piping. Section 7. Piping, Venting, and Containment Sumps The following are some important points with respect to piping and venting. All piping must be at least 4 inches from the bottom of the tank. The installation manual provides tables for determining various internal measurements of various types of tanks. All underground tanks and or compartments must be vented to atmosphere. If the tank has a dry interstitial space, venting that space to atmosphere is not necessary. However, the primary tank must still be vented. When pressure testing the piping, it is very important to isolate the tank from the piping system. Pressures used to test the piping system may cause tank damage. Installing Containment Sumps A containment sump is designed as a termination point for secondary piping systems. Containment sumps come in a variety of models and sizes. Installation instructions for the different models are shipped with the order. Please note that all risers, including pipe risers, must be isolated from all traffic loads. Section 8. Completing Installation When the tank has been backfilled to subgrade, but before placement of concrete or asphalt, take the last required tank diameter measurement. Record it as measurement number 4 on the tank installation checklist, and determine whether tank deflection is within the allowable limits shown in the installation manual. Section 9. Review Now, let's briefly review the most important things to remember about your tank installation. Follow all applicable codes, regulations, and standards of appropriate government agencies. Inspect and perform the appropriate tests on the tank before installation. Never apply direct pressure to the interstitial space of a dry tank without pressure on the primary tank. Evaluate the site thoroughly for its potential to trap water and the potential of the water table to rise to the level of the tank in order to determine whether anchoring is necessary. If the soil in the excavation is unstable, allow for additional spacing and determine whether geotextile is needed. Use only approved rounded or crushed stone for bedding and backfill. If you intend to use a material other than that specified in the installation manual, you must obtain our prior written authorization. When backfilling, pay special attention to the first two 12-inch lifts and the 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock positions around the tank perimeter. Follow the installation manual instructions for preparing and attaching tank accessories. Finally, complete your checklist. Don't skip anything. Your completed checklist is an additional indication that the tank was installed correctly. Retain a copy and provide one to the tank owner. Following the basic instructions provided in this training video and given in greater detail in your installation manual and operating guidelines should result in a long-lasting quality installation. If you have questions about the installation of a tank and cannot find an answer in the installation manual or in the installation supplements, please contact technical support or your sales representative.